layouts can either make or break your web design. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what is good layout, bad layout, and how you can master layouts as well. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Ron Segal. Welcome back to the free web design course. And today we're gonna to talk about layouts, the hardest possibly skill to master, but it's so, so important because it's either um, an amazing website or such a crappy website that you're not going to be able to use it. And because this is a little bit of an abstract topic, I want to jump straight into some examples and then we're going to talk about the principles of what's behind it and how to master it. So I'm jumping straight into a horrible example and I'm just showing you this because look, I don't even know where to look at. There's this huge pop-up in front of my face. There's kind of a hard to read title. There is these buttons here. There is the text here, then some columns here, and nothing is kind of like aligned to anything. I don't really know even where to look at, and this is so confusing. On the other hand, I'm opening up Apple's website, and it's so clear so clear you're scrolling even though there is actually more information here it's organized in such a way that it's actually beautiful to look at it's easy to consume the information and tell the story so let's talk about how how they arrange the information in a way that made it beautiful but also easy to consume so first of all a few principles to to what i think makes a layout good i think it's First of all, if the layout is clear and it's not too confusing, it means that this is a good layout. If there's a hierarchy, meaning you understand what's first, what's second, what's what's last, and it's interesting and it's not really boring, then it means that it's a good layout. And it makes the, the actual content of the website easier to consume, right? You want the goal of our website is for people to actually go through it, read it, purchase, do whatever we want them to do. And if they can't actually consume the content, then it means we did a bad design work. Okay, so there's two things that we're going to talk about that's going to help you make good layout as a beginner designer. The first one is kind of a secret that I learned in design school. It's so, so simple, but it's been highly impactful and it really helps me think about everything that I do or analyze. Basically, the rule goes like this. In every design, there's got to be something that's really big, something that's medium, and something that's small. And once you have these very contrasted sizes, it makes the layout clear and it, you can rearrange and play with the layout as long as you have something that's big, medium, and small. I know it sounds a little vague, so let me jump into um, XD here just to play around with. So this is actually the content of my own website there's an image of me there is kind of a title that says you know basically what i do and there's the the kind of links to the stuff in my website now as as they are right now they're rearranged um on the page and basically it's 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 nothing here. You don't know where to look at. It just looks boring and, and badly designed. So the first step is to want to make the decision about what's going to be big, medium, and small. And that's basically comes down to hierarchy, right? What is more most important? So in my case, I would like people to first of all get the impression of me, see who I am and look at my face. I think this is critical a lot of times when people um, go into website, they wanna know who you are and get kind of the, um, you know, we we people look at faces very easily um, and connect to them. So first I want them to connect with who I am. Then I want them to look at the title, which basically says who I am. And then these links are the third thing, which are the least uh, important things here. So I would go ahead and again, I wouldn't, think about this whole image as the big thing. The big thing is actually me here. So I would go ahead and make this really big. Um, let me throw this into the background. Um, just make sure that my my face actually is actually bigger than anything else that goes around here. Now, as a second thing, I would probably need, need to make this bigger because right now it's the same hierarchy. Um, so let me do this a little bit bolder so it takes up more space. I'm actually going to make this blacker so it takes more visual, it looks stronger and bigger. And we can actually make this bigger, something like this. And now, now there's 
like a contrast, right? Now, this is big. This is when you first come in visually and the most biggest and visual impact is me, the, the image of me. Again, not the background, just the, the actual person in the image. Then you look at this, meaning this is the second priority. And then there's this, which is small. Now, whether we should put this here or we should put this here or we should put this here, it doesn't really matter. You see, actually, whatever I do, it actually works. It can work right here. It can work right there. I can lower the image a little bit just so it doesn't touch my head. Um, but whatever the layout is, it works well because now we have number one, number two, and number three. So we have a clear hierarchy here and now we have a layout that's that's pretty much good. Let me give you a few more examples. So here in the first example, we have a poster and you can see that the most number one thing here that grabs your attention is the title of Nuria Graham, just because it's its biggest and it's white, right? Because of the contrast that jumps fast, even before you know her face in the image or this red rectangular, which is probably number two. That's the thing that grabs your attention. So that's the medium thing I would say. And then we have the uh, the text on the top, Sala and 26. It's basically the small things here, and we have tiny bit of text around as well. Let's check out the second example, this um, digital agency website. You can see here, the number one is actually the title, digital agency focuses on the web. Number two is maybe the kind of like big text in the background, which might, it looks bigger because it's bigger in size, but just because it's so gray, I don't even know if you can see it, I would probably put that as number two, or maybe the text below the image can be kind of the medium thing. And probably the number three is either the buttons here on the top or the logo or something like this. Third example would be number one, the most biggest thing here is probably the helmet alongside with the title that would I would kind of clamp them together into one big visual aspect. Number two is probably the buy now button. And number three would be probably the buttons on the top. So you can see that most good designs that you can see around, you can probably analyze them and break them down into number one, number two, number three, big, medium, small. And I think keep this in mind when you, whatever you're designing it will give you a framework to make sure that there's a clarity and hierarchy in your layouts. So that is kind of tip number one. The second thing that you want to understand and master and will make you help and create clarity within your design is something that's called grids. So we talked a little bit about this when we talked about the history of graphic design and in basically in the 60s where it became pretty popular within the kind of the, the Swiss style. And so grid is basically kind of an, an invisible line structure, a grid of invisible lines that helps us to um, rearrange the content on our screen or general design, right? So it gives us a sense of logic. And it was pretty f f popularized in this book, The Grid System by Joseph Mueller Brookman. And this is a classic, classic design book. I recommend you get it. It will help you understand the frameworks of how to use grids and what to do with it. But let me just jump into um, Adobe XD here to try and under show you basically, let me erase this, how this works. And I'm, I'm again, I'm showing you this in Adobe XD, this works in any design software whatsoever. So you should see somewhere along the lines, the grid here, and I can turn that on. Basically it created 12 columns for me and 12 is the most popular reason and I'll show you why. Now when you're using grids, the idea here is that you can refer to it as kind of a way to organize your content. So I might put something that goes coast to coast, right? It, it takes up the whole space and then maybe I will do something that takes half the space. So this is using six columns. Um, and then we can have kind of like two columns of information, or maybe I would do something that takes only three columns and then I can create actually three columns. And this actually helps me organize knowing what size things should be or where they should be positioned on the page. Now, let me give you, let, let's jump back into the Apple website and you can see here that there is very clear grid here. So this is probably the one column, 
Um, and then here we have basically two columns. And when we scroll down, you can see that um, they're always using this kind of a same structure. And I'll, let's go back actually to their homepage where you can actually see how they're using this structure here. They're actually showing the grid. So this is a really grid-based layout. You have three columns here. Um, each of them, each rectangular is on a different size, but you really see how they use this invisible grid to divide the space on their screen and use it. Now, this is basically how you set this up. And again, usually on web design, we use the 12 columns grid, and that's just because 12 div is divided by so many numbers, right? So you can do one column, you can divide it by two, which is six and six. You can divide it by three, which is four and four. You can divide it by four, which is three uh, columns. So it's just divided by a lot of numbers, and that's why we use the 12 grid. Now, one more concept that you should know about grids is the uh, concept of gutter. And gutter is basically the space that you see here between these columns and I can make it larger as you can see and that would mean that you know I should probably space these elements here which can be you know images different cards different information on the website now the the size of the gutter is probably dependent on what context do you have if you have text you don't want them to be too close to each other right because that would make reading a little bit hard if it's just images they might look be tighter together so it really depends on what content you're going to be placing within these kind of grids within these columns and how you're going to structure them so that's why you should be thinking about the gutter and uh, a lot of times the default kind of works but you sometimes want to adjust that one more thing that you should be thinking about is actually how wide your grid is right so we're going to talk about this more in depth when we'll get to the web context but today most screen size most desktop screen size are really really wide now we don't want to use the entire space just because then people would have to kind of scan from left and right a lot of times and that's that's not really useful and so we a lot of time we want to contain the te the the kind of content on the of the website within what we call a container so the grid is actually going to be even if let's say the this the screen is very uh wide we're, we're going to have the grid contained to somewhere around maybe 1100 or something i'm just throwing in a number 1000 pixels wide and so the content of the website will be centered no matter what we have and i think you can probably see this in most you know websites here it is I'm, I'm like kind of making my screen wider but you can see that in the apple website the grid is not becoming wider than this it is constrained at this let me see how wide their grid is i'm measuring up um so this is actually 1400 pixels wide and i'm doing this by screen capturing on my mac so you can see how wide so that's a pretty wide grid but as you can see it is still being contain all right so a few things for you to take away one thing i do recommend you going over the grid systems and graphic design i think it's really really useful it will also kind of inspire you visually to see some kind of typographic layouts using design which is i think is it's really really a phenomenal and kind of like very basic uh, design book that every designer should at least scan or go over. Now, if you want to practice your layout skills, I do recommend kind of coming up with um, a daily practice, maybe like the one that we did for the typography. So maybe try to take some kind of a headline and a few bullets and maybe an image. Try to create a composition or a layout out of them, maybe as kind of, a, you know, an Instagram post or a social media post that you can use as a practice to share and try to get some contents but do three different layouts to it just to see if you can you know expand your your creativity and try different different sizes different different grids or or just playing around with it just like typography a layout is something that is kind of acquired it's a skill that you need to practice a lot to improve in and improve your your sensibilities to it so my advice to you would just create 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 and start by creating images and then just later on moving to more complex web and dynamic layouts but static layout in an image is a good practice for start 
I hope I hope you found this <laughs> video uh, helpful. Make sure that you're subscribed because we have tons more videos coming up in this web design series. Stay tuned and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.